The ability to break down a large fishery into small sweet spots they're holding bass is one of the most important skills in bass fishing. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can break down miles of water into small 20 or 30 yard sections that are holding fish. Let's get into it. Today I'm on Buffalo Lake in Wisconsin. This is a shallow grassy lake with an average depth of about 5 feet and has stained to dirty water. Today I'm joined by professional angler and fellow YouTuber Matt Steffen. We've both fished Buffalo Lake before, but neither of us have fished it in over 15 years, so it's practically a new lake to us. One of the challenges with Buffalo Lake is that it all looks relatively the same. There is a lot of matted grass with a few boat lanes that are cut by the weed cutters. However, you don't have defined creek channels or really any significant drop-offs. However, because there are some of these boat lanes that are cut by the weed eaters, you will have an edge both on the main channel and also some edges that are created by these boat lanes that are cut into the grass mats. One of the easiest ways to find a concentration of fish on a lake you're unfamiliar with is to find a very defined edge. It's even better if you can find an intersection of two edges. And that's what we did on this fishing trip. We started on an intersection between the main boating channel and one of the secondary channels that's cut into the grass mat. This creates a nice defined point these bass can set up on. I don't know. It, oh, pike. Oh, that might be a big bass. Yep. Big bass. Big bass. Nice one. Dude, there we go. He sharked that thing. Make you want to switch to a swim jig, doesn't it, Matt? <laughs> that's a good one. Stay on there, fish. Oh, there we go. That is a specimen for Wisconsin. Guys, you know, getting back to my roots, catching them with the swim jig. Man, that is absolutely a blast. I cannot get enough of this shallow grass bite. That is a solid two and three quarter pounder on a little swim jig, black and blue, with a little Berkeley grass pig swim bait trailer on the back. Beauty. There we go, two pounds, 10 ounces on that fish. Locked it in, that's the size fish we are looking for. Puts our total, nothing crazy, four pounds, six ounces, but I think we're starting to get it figured out a little bit here. Beautiful fish, let's get him back down in the lake. Good one, Johnny. Here we go, let's get him back down there. Good job, Matt. You need to put that frog down, pick up a swim jig, I'm telling you, man. You want me to throw a swim jig? No, you can throw a frog. You can keep not catching them if you want. It's fine. I just, dude, if you catch one right on it, why wouldn't there be one sitting right on the point? Like, that you're not going to be able to hit with a swim jig. <laughs> so here's the bait I'm throwing. Just a 3 8 ounce dirty jig swim jig in the black and blue color with a little green pumpkin Berkeley grass pig trailer. And there's a nice little grassy point here that fish came off of. Now I was just working that swim jig, doing a little Alabama shake down up here in Wisconsin and just working that bait over this grassy point. It kind of almost resembles like a intersection of a river ledge that you would see down south. But basically what you have is just these small little lanes or ditches that cut into the main channel here. There's some current that's running through here and these fish are positioning on these little openings and corners in these major grass fields. And this current's just setting them up perfect and also this wind. And Mac just had a freaking good one blow up there. So it is happening right now. That looks pretty good too. I don't know. Oh, oh, that's a freaking good one, good one dude. <laughs> there we go. I mean, that's why you throw the frog. Nice, dude. We said it, there should be one right there. <laughs> we said it, we're like, why is there not a fish there? Look at that chunk. An old Kermit. Nice, dude. It's a three. That's a three. Should we get a weight on him? Look how healthy that fish is. He's not real long, but man, he's a fatty. Good old Wisconsin bass. Chunky. Frogfish. Love it, Johnny. I love it. Love it, dude. This is what we came here for. These are the ones we need Got to get. We doubled up here with bass. Oh, yeah. another good one. Nice, Get up in dude. here. Doubled up. 
frog fish are bigger, but hey, three eight, we go. Johnny, three eight. Three eight, nice. Let's throw this guy on there too. Let's see here. Lock that in. Look at that, doubled up. I mean, what can you more can you ask D for? Dude, we are putting together a simple pattern <laughs> that is easy to fish. You just gotta recognize what you're doing right off the bat, and you'll catch some good ones like this. This isn't a giant on my side, but it is number four. We got one pound, 15 ounces. Okay, well, we got 913 for four, so we're getting closer. Beautiful fish, good deal right there. As you can see, by targeting the intersection point of two hard edges, we're able to put multiple fish in the boat very quickly. Now, you may be thinking that this may only apply to these heavily matted grassy lakes. However, these edges and intersection points will appear on almost every single lake type across the country. For example, on Highland Reservoirs, you may have a hard edge created by the actual contour of the bottom. If you have a creek channel that runs up against a shallower point, that's going to create a sharp drop off or edge. If you have a place where two of these creek channels join together near a point or a flat, you're going to have an intersection of two sharp edges that will create a nice feeding spot that bass will group up on. The same thing happens on the Tennessee River. Some of the most common places to find schools of fish on these types of fisheries is where the main river channel intersects with a secondary creek channel. Finally, on natural lakes, you'll find that there are grass edges that are not visible above the water, but only appear under the water. You'll oftentimes have an inside edge and an outside edge to the grass that you can find with your side imaging. This is very similar to the types of areas we're fishing on Buffalo Lake. However, on Buffalo, the grass is above the surface of the water and you can clearly see these edges. However, if the lake is submerged under the water, you have to use your electronics to find those edges. Therefore, regardless of the type of lake you're on, you should be able to find these hard edges. Whether that is a structural edge where you have an actual drop off from shallower to deeper water, or if it's the edge of cover, like the outside edge of a grass line, or a transition from bigger rock to smaller rock. All of these edges will attract fish. If you can find an intersection between one type of edge with another type of edge, you're very likely to find a school of bass. And really quickly, if you are struggling to identify the types of cover and structure on your fish finder, I would highly recommend checking out the Sonar Interpretation Guide over on fishthemoment.com. In this guide, we give examples of all the different types of cover, structure, and bait fish that you'll find on your fishery, and you can get examples from 2D sonar, down imaging, and side imaging. These images will apply to any brand of fish finder and are a great tool and resource to use on the water to make sure you're identifying things properly on your fish finder. Definitely check out the Fish the Moment Sonar Interpretation Guide over at fishthemoment.com. Oh, what a pike. <laughs> Thought you had one. I was doing the, oh, what a bass, Jimmy Houston, uh, or Larry Nixon, and it did the... Uh, Oh, no. Son! <laughs> Jiminy Christmas with a bass. Good old son. That's Roland Martin. That's son, yeah. Oh, man. That was a freaking fun. I do. It's still fun. Get, but I don't care about getting bit by the pit girl or not. Like, as long as I'm getting bit it's and there's action. enough bass mixed in, it's freaking fun. Is there an opening up here? I feel like there's an opening somewhere up here. Looks like it should come back out up there. Oh, golly! What was that? Right at the freaking boat. Was that a bass? <laughs> it was a, no, it was a pickerel. Oh. But he just slammed it right at the boat. Oh, freaked me out. He like took, he, my rod literally had an inch of line in the water. Is I that like what? how you call him pickerel. You what? Re, you really turned southern. It's a northern pike, Johnny. Uh, a pickerel is a different species. Got the pike. Fine, I'll call him an Esox. Lucius. He sucks Lucius. That is a Lucius. That is a big They're Lucius. getting bigger. They are getting bigger. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice Lucius. <laughs> getting some better quality pike here, you know, than every other cast on this stretch. 
Do you like a white versus a black and blue or anything? Uh, if I'm... Walleye! <laughs> no. Okay, now I'm just getting a little bit annoyed. It's just annoying <laughs> taking them on and off. You're touting, you're touting your pike skills now. I was the pike master back in the day, dude. Johnny, I went back to the frog. <laughs> Got him. Nice. On the old flip and hover. Prototype secret sauce. <laughs> Not a big one, but it's number five. Can't get my hands on them. Little big bite baits BFE on the prototype core tackle flip and hover. We have some, you know, secret sauce still saved up for you guys. That looks pretty sweet right there. Beautiful little fish. There he is. What, is what that? do you got? That's a catfish, I think. No, pike. God. Pike? <laughs> On the hover. On the hover. There you go, Lucius. I don't want that to bite you. No, they will tear you up. They're so sharp you wouldn't even feel it. You'd just be bleeding. Has the, has the upstream... Got him. There you go. Don't know what I got, but I got something. Bass. No? Bass. Yeah, it's official. Bassy tush. Look at that. <laughs> On the old Tush, 7 knot, 5.8 inch Tie Tech. That impact as a big bait, trying to get a better quality bite than when I was on the swim jig. Not quite working out quite yet, but it's a fish. Well, guys, we had a blast here on Buffalo Lake in Wisconsin. The conditions were a little bit tough. This was like the first major cold front of the summer. It's been 80 degrees here every single day for the past two months. So we were hoping to get some frog action going today. And Matt did catch one really good one on yep. the frog, but they just weren't really committing to it this morning. Yeah, we've had, uh, I mean, 90 degree temps for the last week. Been really dry and we had a good storm front come through last night. As you can see, we're still experiencing it. Uh, air temps, I mean, you're wearing a jacket. It's <laughs> mid 60s maybe, so it's cool. I, I do think the frog bite was probably turned down a little bit from that. But we were able to take advantage of, you know, some of the conditions with respect to current base. We've got a strong wind, we've got natural current flowing through here, and we did find some fish set up. For sure, and the thing with the frog, guys, is usually you would think these stormy, cloudy conditions are good for a frog. And that's true if there's humidity, if there's a lot of humidity in the air, but when it kind of gets to this like post front north wind, mm -hmm. not usually the best. So I actually ended up switching up to a swim jig after missing a few fish on the frog this morning. And that's what accounted for most of my fish today, just a dirty jigs, three eight ounce black and blue swim jig with a Berkeley grass pig on the back. I also caught a couple more fish just kind of flipping around this new prototype flipping hover from core tackle testing out with a big bite baits bfe and also caught one very small upgrade on a bigger 5.8 inch Tytec swim bait with a 7 aught tush we actually have another prototype here that's a little bit lighter tush in that 7 aught and that worked really well on some pike and also some bass so it worked out pretty well there matt also yeah. had a couple other baits as well yeah i mean as we talked about we did get the biggest fish today it was just on a Spro popping frog, that's the killer gill color. Uh, we had a few fish come up and look at it as well. They just weren't committing that great to it. And then we did come in contact with a couple of hard pieces of cover. We fished a couple of bridges. We had a couple of washout areas and that's when I was tossing just the light 364 core tackle hover rig with a uh, jackal rhythm wag. It's four and a half inch size. And that generated a couple of smaller bites as well. Uh, but a good one-two punch. I mean, I think we covered a lot of water and we had a pretty decent day. For sure. I mean, given the conditions and the fact we only fished for, you know, four hours and it's my first time on the lake in 15 years, Matt, almost, I've, yeah. you know, how long? I've only fished it once and it was probably about 15 years ago as well. And uh, we've got a, a storm coming in right now, so it's probably a good time to get off the, off the water. 
Yeah, we only got like, you know, 12 pounds for five fish. But in Wisconsin, that's not too bad, especially for the limited time and very little knowledge on this lake. But otherwise, guys, hopefully you enjoyed how we broke down this lake, learning the process for breaking down some of these bigger grassy lakes. The information here can apply not just up north, but also down south if you have grass mats on river systems, Tennessee River, all kinds of stuff. So use the information in this video to your advantage and hopefully put some big fish in the boat this summer. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you all next one.